On the evening of April 8, 1954, a South African Airways de Havilland Comet lifted off the runway at Rome's Ciampino Airport, embarking on its journey towards South Africa. Flight 201, chartered by British Overseas Airways, represented the second leg of a London to Johannesburg route. With a crew of seven and 14 passengers aboard, the flight faced a 25-hour delay due to maintenance issues, including a faulty fuel gauge and 30 loose bolts on one of the wings. Despite these setbacks, passengers eagerly anticipated their journey as Captain William Mostert guided the aircraft to its cruising altitude of 35,000 feet. Tragically, the flight would never reach its destination. Shortly after passing south of Naples, the aircraft made its final communication with air traffic control. Suddenly and inexplicably, the plane disintegrated at its cruising altitude, claiming the lives of all on board. The aftermath of this catastrophic event prompted a thorough investigation chaired by the Lord Cohen, culminating in the release of official findings by the British Ministry of Transport and Civil Aviation on February 1, 1955. The investigation uncovered critical design flaws and the phenomenon of metal fatigue, previously misunderstood in aviation circles. Over time, this undetected fatigue would lead to explosive decompression, resulting in the mid-flight disintegration of both Flight 201 and another de Havilland Comet, Flight 781. These tragic events cast a shadow over the early era of jet travel, prompting widespread concern among the public and airlines regarding the safety of commercial jet transportation. Despite these setbacks, the aviation industry persisted in its pursuit of jet travel. Boeing, recognizing the potential and value of international air travel, continued its efforts to develop an American alternative. This determination bore fruit when Pan American World Airways, Pan Am founder, Juan Tripp, seized the opportunity and placed an order for the first fleet of Boeing 707s, heralding a new era in commercial aviation. Welcome back to Compelling History. Today we embark on the second episode of our four-episode series on the airline which changed flight. Today we look at the jetliner which started the jet age and defined Pan Am for a generation of travelers around the world. Before we travel back to the early 1950s, make sure you liked and subscribe if you enjoy our content. Or, if you hate what modern airlines have become, you can give this video a protest, like, and subscription. Part 1 Early Development of the 707 Following the advancements in jet propulsion and aircraft design made during the Second World War, the aviation industry of the 1950s witnessed a transformative period and fierce competition among airlines. Amidst this landscape, Boeing was embarking on a journey that would not only redefine air travel, but also significantly impact the trajectory of Pan American World Airways, Pan Am. At the heart of this revolution was the Boeing 707 a groundbreaking aircraft that would shape the future of commercial aviation. Equipped with four Pratt & Whitney JT3C turbojet engines, each generating over 10,000 pounds of thrust, the 707 promised airliners unparalleled performance and reliability. Furthermore, the cabin layout of the Boeing 707 was meticulously designed to maximize passenger comfort and convenience. Spacious seating arrangements, luxurious amenities, and state-of-the-art entertainment systems set new benchmarks for in-flight experiences. England's de Havilland DH-106 Comet first flew in 1952, but was soon overrun with structural problems that caused three of them to crash over a period of two years. The Soviet Union's Tupolev Tu-104 Camel became the world's only commercial jetliner between 1956 and 1958 when the Comet was grounded but it had capacity for only 50 passengers. However, America's first international airline, Pan American World Airways, Pan Am, was quick to embrace the potential of the Boeing 707. The first commercial orders for the 707 came from Pan Am on October 13, 1955, which it would receive in August of 1958, and would immediately started planning the daily transatlantic jet service from New York to Paris. Despite competition from the DC-8 and the British de Havilland Comet, the Boeing 707 emerged as the front-runner in intercontinental jet aircraft production. Its success spurred rapid developments in airport terminals, runways, airline catering, baggage handling, reservation systems, and other air transport infrastructure. Moreover, the advent of the 707 
prompted upgrades in air traffic control systems to prevent interference with military jet operations. Over the course of its production, a total of 1,010 707s were built for civilian use between 1958 and 1978, with many finding their way into military service. The 707 production line remained open for purpose-built military variants until as late as 1991, with the last new build 707 airframes built as E3 and E6 aircraft. Traces of the 707's legacy are still evident in modern aircraft designs, such as the Boeing 737, which utilizes a modified version of the 707's fuselage and the same external nose and cockpit configurations. These design elements were also present in previous models like the 727, while the 757 also adopted the 707 fuselage cross-section. The early years of the Boeing 707's development laid the foundation for its eventual impact on Pan Am and the broader aviation industry. As we delve deeper into the story of the 707, we will explore Juan Tripp's pivotal role in securing these revolutionary aircraft for Pan Am and the transformative effect they had on the airline's operations and legacy. Part 2 Juan Tripp In the mid-1950s, while most airline executives were cautiously considering a gradual transition from piston-driven airplanes to turbine-powered ones, Juan Tripp of Pan Am stood out as a visionary outlier. While others hesitated, Tripp saw an imminent opportunity for rapid advancement in aviation. While it was commonly assumed that jet travel for the masses was a distant prospect, Tripp had the foresight to recognize that the future was much closer than anticipated, perhaps only a few years away. Despite skepticism brought on from the early failure of the British Comet jet transport, Tripp remained undeterred. He influenced Boeing's Bill Allen and Donald Douglas during developing of their groundbreaking jet airplanes that aligned with his vision for Pan American. Consequently, the rest of the world's airlines found themselves compelled to follow Tripp's lead. By the onset of the 60s, a new standard for air travel had emerged, surpassing previous conceptions of state-of-the-art aviation. When Willis Lipscomb, Pan Am's Vice President of Traffic and Sales, announced in February of 1965 the introduction of movies on transatlantic flights, it followed extensive debates within the IATA community. Some members resisted this development, but Tripp's relentless determination in the matter would prevail, reflecting his unwavering commitment to enhancing the passenger experience and pushing boundaries in commercial aviation. Tripp's influence extended beyond mere persuasion. He orchestrated an unprecedented collaboration between America's major aircraft manufacturers, Douglas and Boeing, compelling them to advance the frontiers of commercial air travel. Approximately 31 years after Pan Am's inaugural 90-mile flight to Havana, the first Boeing B-707 jet embarked on its journey from New York to Paris, marking a significant milestone in aviation history. While other carriers attempted to delay the onset of the jet age by imposing higher fares for jet travel, Pan Am under Tripp's leadership maintained consistent pricing for its 707 flights. This decision exemplified Tripp's commitment to accessibility and innovation, ensuring that the benefits of jet travel were accessible to a broader audience. Part 3 Pan Am 707 Service as discussed in our previous video, Pan Am emerged as a pioneering force in the aviation industry, particularly with the development of the Boeing 707. The introduction of this revolutionary aircraft marked a significant milestone not only for Boeing, but also for Pan Am, which played a pivotal role in its development and initial operation. In the early 1960s, Pan Am held an exclusive position as the launch customer for the Boeing 707, a status that conferred upon the airline a unique advantage in the rapidly expanding realm of international air travel. This exclusivity provided Pan Am with a competitive edge, allowing it to offer unmatched levels of comfort, speed, and reliability to its passengers. The Boeing 707 quickly became synonymous with Pan Am, representing the epitome of luxury and sophistication in air travel. Pan Am wasted no time in capitalizing on the capabilities of the Boeing 707, introducing a series of pioneering routes that connected distant corners of the globe. These early services ushered in a new era of convenience and accessibility, shrinking the world and bringing far-flung destinations within reach. One of the most iconic moments in Pan Am's history with the Boeing 707 occurred in 1964, when the legendary British band, The Beatles, embarked on their maiden voyage to the United States aboard a Pan Am 707. 
This historic flight not only symbolized the cultural significance of air travel, but also underscored Pan Am's reputation as the preferred carrier for high-profile passengers and celebrities. Beyond the glamour of celebrity sightings, Pan Am's Boeing 707 services set new standards for in-flight amenities and customer service. From gourmet dining to spacious cabins outfitted with cutting-edge technology, Pan Am spared no expense in ensuring a luxurious and comfortable travel experience for its discerning clientele. However, Pan Am's dominance in the realm of international air travel would not last indefinitely. As the success of the Boeing 707 became apparent, other airlines began to recognize its potential and swiftly followed suit, introducing their own fleets of 707s. This proliferation of competitors marked the beginning of a new chapter in the evolution of air travel, characterized by increased competition and choice for passengers. The expanding competition posed formidable challenges for Pan Am, forcing the airline to adapt its strategies and differentiate itself in an increasingly crowded market. While Pan Am continued to excel in terms of service quality and global reach, the arrival of competitors wielding their own Boeing 707s signaled the dawn of a more competitive era in aviation. Flying aboard a Pan Am 707 during the golden age of air travel was an experience unlike any other. Passengers were treated to unparalleled levels of luxury and comfort, with attentive cabin crew catering to their every need. From the moment they stepped aboard until the aircraft touched down at their destination, passengers were enveloped in an atmosphere of refinement and elegance. The allure of Pan Am's Boeing 707 services extended far beyond mere transportation. It represented an escape from the ordinary, a journey into the realms of possibility and adventure. Whether embarking on a transatlantic odyssey or a trans-Pacific voyage, passengers aboard a Pan Am 707 were participants in a grand spectacle of modernity and progress. The story of Pan Am's early services with the Boeing 707 serves as a testament to the transformative power of innovation and the enduring appeal of air travel as a symbol of human achievement and aspiration. Conclusion. The development and operational service of the Boeing 707, particularly in partnership with Pan American World Airways, Pan Am, stand as a watershed moment in the history of commercial aviation. The Boeing 707's inception marked a significant leap forward in air travel technology, ushering in an era of unprecedented speed, comfort, and accessibility for passengers around the globe. Pan Am's visionary leadership, embodied by figures like Juan Tripp, played a pivotal role in shaping the trajectory of the Boeing 707 and its integration into the commercial aviation landscape. Tripp's foresight and determination not only accelerated the adoption of jet travel, but also set new standards for customer experience and service excellence. Operating in an exclusive capacity as the launch customer for the Boeing 707, Pan Am capitalized on the aircraft's capabilities to forge new routes and connect distant destinations. The airline's commitment to luxury and innovation, exemplified by iconic moments such as the Beatles' maiden voyage, solidified its reputation as a pioneer in the golden age of air travel. Its legacy endures as a symbol of elegance, sophistication, and the boundless possibilities of air travel. Thank you so much for watching the second episode of Compelling History series on Pan Am. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Speaking of growing the channel, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who's subscribed to the channel. I couldn't be more excited to announce we went from roughly 200 subscribers last week to over 1,000 this week. I truly appreciate everyone who's watched our videos and supports the channel. Episode 3 will cover Pan Am's iconic brand and marketing, so make sure you don't miss out.